What if I do not wish to leave? Why did the music change? It was all nice and sweet and now it's like creepy. My feet haven't even landed firmly on the floor when- ah! Had I known there would be a party in my own home tonight, I would have opened a bloody bottle or two. What are you doing? He marches towards me, grabs my collar, and aims a gun at my head! Ashton! Hey, now you two, I, I'm sure we can all talk about this first. No! Help me. Please. No! It just ended like that! You can't do that! Oh my god, we're in Luke's chapter! Hey internet, it's Jessica, and welcome back to the letter! So we're finally in Luke's chapter, and he kind of let things slip out of that. I was suspecting that he was using Hannah for her money, and it was true. He was planning to kill her and all that stuff, but he ended up falling in love with her. So this is after uh, Hannah started uh, having the vision of the girl and started choking. Um, so we're gonna see how their marriage is gonna be, because this is after Hannah said, I don't want to be with you, I want to break. Break. So hopefully it won't like destroy him too much, but we'll see. The odd dreams don't linger, thankfully, but with the morning comes another disturbance. Both too loud and too sharp for my taste. And I have very fine taste. When the piercing rings of the door re reaches my bedroom, I'm not very inclined to think that the person who built this place lacks any sense of it. Perhaps the only good thing in this is that it, the ruckus has chased away the needling guilt from last night's commotion, if only temporary. Still, it's a bloody annoying distraction. I can tell already that it's going to be a long day. It hasn't even started. Before the racket even lasts another minute, I'm peeling myself off the bed and heading straight for the main door. Oh, and before I begin, I forgot to read Luke's profile, so we should probably do that, right? Okay, Lucille Mitchell Wright, or Luke Wright. He is born August 2nd. Um, he is a Leo. He's 5'8", occupation, president, and CEO. He is British. He is an atheist, but raised Angelican. His education is high school dropout, private tutor. He likes bread pudding, dogs, wine, and absent piano playing, daffodils, money, women, and power. Interesting that he put dog there, okay. A prostitute's son, oh, he spent his childhood roaming the streets begging or pickpocketing in order to avoid home. Home meant a too drunk mother and her equally drunk clients. Some who would take to beating the child out of anger if he has so much as looked at them wrong. That meant he was always in trouble in form of an in one form or another. Nothing was done to correct it until, in a sober moment, his mother found out about the abuse and promised to take better care of her son. Luke was happy for a while, but his mother's bad habits led to an early grave and left him an orphan until his biological father, a businessman with no legitimate heir, sought him out. He was trained to inherit right enterprise, but along the way got mixed up with illegal activities that put the company in a bad spot after his assistants ran off with a large sum of dirty money. Bankruptcy would have been inevitable if he hadn't married Hannah. Okay, so that kind of explains his need for like money and like people to care about him and stuff like that or to put on this facade like I'm better than you, like you're, you're a peasant or whatever because he was in that situation and he grew up in a very you know, poor environment. And it explains why he's an alcoholic too, because of his mother. And I guess that explains why he's so closed off, just because of all of that. But the only time he actually had a sense to be like, I actually care about someone is when he married Hannah, even though it was for like the wrong reasons. Interesting. Okay. There will be murder today, if this doesn't let up. How quaint. It seems everything in this blatant universe is intended on getting on my nerves as of late. God and Bennett! Only a Nancy would knock at such an ungodly hour! In the first place, I shouldn't be the one doing this. This is why I hired a valet for fuck's sake. Where's that damn butler when I need him? I'll be honest, if only for today. With the mansion this quiet at the hour in the morning, it's easy to believe those little ghost stories might be real. But the only horror here is how long Hannah's patience with me will last after the incident at the party. Neither the deafening silence nor the biting chill spreading across every room in the place. There's no place for fear when another set of problems already burns that fuel. So I wait for another second. When the butler answers my call, I simply yank the door open myself, perhaps with more force than needed. And maybe it should be appropriately there, considering the person on the other side the hour he dared appear to my doorstep. Even someone with a half-brain knows not to disturb anyone this early. Brief confusion quickly gives away to anger, and before the bloody photo- And before the bloody photographer can even get a word in, I'm hurling venom at him. It's less than he deserves, really. 
Hannah will disapprove, scold me for te treating the man with such a disrespect if she hears me right now. She seems fond of him, after all, treats him like a friend she knows for years. But she's not here, isn't she? What she doesn't know... You yeah. again! It's bloody six in the morning! What the hell is it now? Listen, sir, I know this is not a good time. Oh, it's not a good time! Did you even check the clock before coming here? I bet you didn't! This is still my home. My rules also apply to this place as much as Hannah's do. As simple as that. Unlike you, the ones living in this house need to sleep. It just so happens that it'll also be a person I will never take to liking to. No need for remorse. Come back when people are actually awake. Or I'll call security on you. He continues shouting even as I slam the door in his face. Some nonsense about the news lately, though I don't understand most of it. However, with the closed doors muffled, the better part of it, and with no ears to listen, his trade doesn't last too long. Eventually, he leaves in silence once again fills the room, as it should. In hindsight, maybe I should also call for, for psychiatrist services? He certainly sounds mental just screaming like that. A suspicious man like him left roaming in the immediate grounds? Nothing good can come out of it. But if his presence will indeed bring a problem, a bad sign of things to come, I'll probably know soon enough. Worse comes to worse, uh, Struken or Stroken, I don't know. We'll take care of it if need be. It's what I'm paying him for. In the meantime, the bigger problem at hand, a hangover. I think what he meant there is just like, if we need to, we can kill Zack and like, Johans can take care of it. So, Johans is like the hired hitman, slash bodyguard, slash butler, slash doctor, slash, I don't know, uh, of Luke. Maybe I'll have an absent to temper it, dog hairs, or some wine to help me get back to sleep. Still early, one glass won't hurt, or two. Whatever the case, I need to think. Where that will lead me to? It's nothing. Everything leads to nothing, except for this pounding headache as if my mind will burst at any time and leak out of my ears. My vision swims in and out of view. My stomach threatens rebellion with plans of making me throw up of what little food I have taken in with how much my mouth feels. It's filled with, like, if... Like, it's filled with cotton. One would think that it's the fact that I'm hungover would make me more the grumpiest person in the room. But as it is, my eyes move over to Hannah, who is stirring sugar in her tea and scowling down at it, all the while as if she had just murdered a baby in front of her. I have half the mind to bemoan my current state and make a fool of myself just to make her smile. And I'm rather good at be bemoaning. Not that I wouldn't admit that. Why, I already adopted the posture of a whiny teenager as I speak, slouched forward with my cheeks on the table. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, God, I'm dying. Hana, Johan's call an ambulance, please. Let it be known that I leave all my belongings to Hana right near Evans. Everything but 30,000 quid. But oh, I see a bright light. What is he doing? I see a farm, Mother Dearest. Is that you? Little Lucille is on his way home. I'm so sorry, but I must leave you, Hana. Cover my face. Your eyes dazzle. I die young. That I can manage through the hangover, a thing entirely of my fault. Considering I've twice drunk the night before, another thing I will never admit. Really, it's a miracle I haven't a, a cured alcohol poisoning yet. Yeah, I'm surprised about that too. Oh, stop being so melodramatic, Luke. Besides, you never lived in a farm. You hate farms. We are not bringing you to the hospital for a hangover. Really? One would think you'd be used to it by now with how stubborn you are about your drinks. Dare I ask what the 30,000 quid is for, though? It pulls a small smile from her for a moment, but the pinched look on her face returns quickly enough. He lost a bet with Robert and Elise after a night of drinking at the crawl. 10,000 each. Jeez. And another 10 to me. The sneer that makes its way on my face doesn't hold as much as the heat as it usually does. It's just a bit friendly ribbing. Though, I still wish he wouldn't tattle. Of course it was my fault for mentioning the money. It wasn't like anyone will notice 30 grand missing from millions, though. That's how much I spend on a normal weekend. Oh, must you be such a teacher's pet? I told you not to talk about it. <sighs> I'm having second thoughts about moving to the penthouse. If this is what you do when I'm not looking. I've almost forgotten about that little arrangement too, shame. Hopefully that's the reason why she's so intent on glaring at the table until its varnish peels off. The alternative would be sobering. It was that one time. I'm not a child in need of minding or mother hands. As much as I'd love for you to stay, you said you need some time to yourself. Don't let the fact that I lost a bet once make you think I have to be supervised. It wasn't. I'm just worried about you, Luke. Yeah. I'd be less so if you actually sat up. Why are you worried about me? 
I'm more concerned about what your doctor told you. How did the house call go? I didn't want to intrude on her privacy when the doctor arrived. A ridiculous sentiment considering I am still her husband. But it wasn't like I could have done any good being there. What with nursing a hangover and all. However, a part of me feared what would be said. Not to mention, I trust that Hannah would tell me if something is serious. Of course, it's probably something bad. And I would be a fool to hope otherwise. I found her having a seizure for goodness sake. I should have rushed her to the hospital as soon as she awoke, but it was her insistence that kept me at bay. A cup of tea finds itself in my hands, an attempt to appease me, no doubt. But I don't bother to drink, let alone look up. If anything, I just press my forehead on the table and hide my childish, childless pout on my lips. Not that this is any better. I... it was fine. The physician took some of my blood, and he scheduled me for a few lab tests tomorrow morning. So does she not tell Luke that she's pregnant? Or is she gonna wait till, like, the end of the game where she's like, Surprise, I'm pregnant, and then the ghost will kill her or something? I've already called for a driver and attendant to accompany me, so there's no need for you to worry. And what? You'll just be leaving me behind then? And I don't think you should be going anywhere alone. You hate hospitals even more than you hate farms, Luke. And Kylie's coming for your play date tomorrow, remember? Relax. I'm taking Johans with me if it makes you feel better. Herr Dr. Hobbs asked that I keep her under observation for the time being. Naturally, I'll be reporting my findings at the hospital. Sitting up, I run a finger on over the rim of my teacup and mull over it. I do hate the bloody place. I thought hiring strong, uh, I thought hiring Johans would have been enough for me to avoid the place. Apparently not. Bloody doctors and bloody sick people. I don't want to catch anything contagious. Can't even tell crying people to shut up if they get any too annoying. Respecting their grief, my arse. Saving, save for the life and death situation, I'd rather avoid seeing a mass graveyard that hid beneath the sterile air and white and white tiles. I guess you two can go without me. But I can't believe how naturally you two conspire behind my back. Don't expect my help if those bloody doctors bleed you too dry. Vampires, every single one of them. Not as bad as lawyers and politicians, but close enough. You do know Carly will be upset when she finds out you're not here tomorrow. Again. She'll be happy enough to spend time with her fairy godfather, I'm sure. You're a good role model for her, despite your whining. No matter how many times Hannah claims that whining is unbearable to me, I never listen. It's not like anyone that matters here to judge. Well, it's not like anyone here else matters. I'll whine if I bloody well want and want to, and I'll be no lesser because of it. Of course, I will not tolerate another person's whining, except perhaps for Hannah, but she hardly ever does that. Even right now, I can see a look of pain passes on her face, and her hand goes to her stomach. Yet she keeps quiet, not bringing it up or complaining. What should I do? Call for an ambulance. Ask if she's alright. Okay, calling for an ambulance is a bit excessive. Let's just be like, hey, are you okay, wife? You wanna tell me you're pregnant? <laughs> are you alright? Should we be concerned? Maybe we should bring you to the hospital now. I just feel a little queasy, that's all. A bit more tea in me, maybe some more sleep, and I'll be right as rain. Hey, how's the relationship? Okay, went up, that's good. Alright, cool, I like that. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time around people who lie for a living, and I can't help but feel that there's more to that than just that. Maybe it's just as she says and I'm overthinking it, but I trust Hannah will fess up before things get any worse. She's never really lied to me before, nothing big at least. If you're sure, I'm just worried. You'll tell me if anything is wrong, right? I- Is it the fact that she's just scared, you know, because of, um, you know, how the way he's been acting? Um... I don't- I really don't know if Hannah knows anything about Luke, like, the way he- he really is. Cause like Johan said, are you sure she doesn't know anything? There's a possibility that Hannah does know, but she's just pushing it in the back of her mind to be like, Oh, I'm in denial. My husband's a good person. He's just an idiot sometimes, but he doesn't murder people. So, I don't know. You do know you can still trust me. That I do still care about you. I know that. I just- I'm just going to be moving out soon. Even if it is for a short while, you won't always be there for me. Did you finish packing before you? I understand if you haven't, and I won't blame you if you've changed your mind after what happened. You can stay until you feel better. I'm still moving. It isn't like you can't visit to check up on me. Although that does somewhat defeat the point. Luke, I'm a big girl. I'm going to get a checkup tomorrow, take whatever pills they tell me to get, and get over it. You really don't need to worry. I'm fine. Oh, I do so hate those words. I hide my scowl by taking a sip of tea, fighting off the urge to hurl the cup at the wall. 
I'm fine, she says, a lie. Apparently the sour disposition I have, one not entirely brought from my hangover, is still obvious. Without saying a word, Hannah puts her hand on mine and squeezes it tight. Her hands are cold and clammy, her grip is weak. I can see the small tremors that run along her shoulders and the paleness in her cheeks. She is yet to recover from whatever happened to her. She's not fine. And I'm not either. Fine. I don't need to like it, but fine. I don't think either of us really like it. But I do think it is for the best. Perhaps we should bring you back to bed. The sooner you are off your feet, the better. Is that some sort of roundabout way of saying that you want to sweep me off my feet and take me to bed? This isn't our honeymoon. I need rest, mister. See, if, if Luke wasn't being weird and like... Uh, you know, very crazy. I would think, like, Luke and Hannah are really cute together, but, like, I still don't know. <laughs> I'm aware that this is the farthest thing from our honeymoon. This isn't how things are supposed to be. Hannah isn't supposed to leave. I'm not supposed to let her. And if she did leave, it's supposed to be m on my terms. Everything is going wrong. What the hell on your terms? But I respect her enough to let her have her space, as she, as she so puts it. If divorce is brought up, however, well, that's another matter entirely. Really, now, you shouldn't have gotten up in the first place. Breakfast in bed exists for a reason. Come on, then. Back to bed you go. Are you going to carry me to bed, then? You're far too heavy for that. Johans could carry you, if you'd like. You know, you could at least humor her and just be like, yeah, sure, if you want. Because I know she's kind of, like, joking in a way. Like, if you actually want to repair your marriage, if you claim that you love her and you're not only, like, marrying her for your money... You know, I, I would imagine that Luke would try to tease with her around more than he's doing so now instead of being like, yeah, Johans will carry you. Can you blame me if I enjoy food too much? I can walk, thank you very much. I don't have to say a word as she clutches my arm to steady herself. There is no protest as she uses me as a clutch while going up the stairs. But that's as far as I want to go. Judging by the light brush on Hannah's face, she's gotten self-conscious about it too. Johans, look after her, and you stay in bed. I just need to... go out. I'll have plenty of time to be lonely in the mansion by myself when Hannah moves out. For now, I can go and stretch my legs. Fresh air, all that. Breathe. Gray skies loom over the horizon through the sun, fights for every uh, precious minute in the in it gets to stay. It'll rain again soon, with the wind bringing along... With the wind bringing along the gloomy clouds normal to Luxborn until then, it doesn't hurt to be out here for fresh air and sunshine. I walk to the gardens, what little of there is at any moment anyway, and kneel by the daffodils. They were the first to be brought here and planted at my request, and if nothing else, they brought in the sense of peace. They were mother's favorites. I lift my chin up and welcome the light that shines upon me, and for a minute I can imagine myself as one of the flowers, peaceful blooming and all too happy to stand in its warmth. Light would be much easier if it were all like flowers, wouldn't it? But I didn't step out here to get all philosophical. I have problems much more practical than figuring out what the meaning of life is, after all. Too many things have gone these past few days, and I won't forget about them, even just for a moment. It's almost all saints, isn't it? To think I've almost forgotten. I speak the words absentmindedly. The dates mean nothing to me as I neither worship the religion nor have any graves to visit. After all, Mother was never given a proper burial. Oh, it's a date, good as any, for me to grieve. Otherwise, I would have, uh, I would have done so every single day, crippling myself and shutting everyone else out. I can remember how the flames licked at her flesh, and how it consumed her body until there was nothing left but ash. I stood there watching with an operator and social service worker, through, though I could have been alone for all I care. I felt alone. It was the most that could be done. No one would attend the funeral of a dead prostitute, let alone pay for it. All that is left of her, proof that she had lived, is her name written in the ledger of Luxburn Cemetery, a lighter and me. I pull out the lighter from my jacket, can't stop myself from flicking it open and staring at the flame and running my thumb over her name. Eleanor. That's her name. All in all, it isn't much, but it's something. And it'll be wrong of me not to make something of myself when when she would have given everything to make sure I can become anything I want to be. Feels like I'm stuck in a nightmare right now. What I would give to have you here by my side, mother dear. To see you smiling at me. Alive and as beautiful as ever. I'm afraid I'm starting to forget what your face looks like. No, he's probably really the young when she your died. Hair. Eleanor Chandler. Eleanor Chandler was a wonderful woman, though not everyone would have agreed. Not everyone has seen past her occupation, past her vices and her illness. You know, that's kind of sad. And it, it, it's true. People who do work in, in the sex industry 
they always assume like these people are the worst people in the world even though it's like 99% of the time they're just normal people like you and I it's just that their job involves sex and stuff like that and it, it's sad because society puts on this like you're dirty or you're gross you're diseased you're desperate you're a whore you're all these things if you work in the sex industry and that's really sad because in reality these people are just trying to make money to make a living right or they have a family to take care of or like in this case uh, Eleanor had a son that she had to take care of which was Luke so that's a very it's, it's not nice to treat people like that they're still people you know all they saw was a poor woman who sold her body to make ends meet and had a bastard son because of it. They didn't see the mother who worked hard to put food on the table for me, the woman who gave and gave and gave to me while expecting nothing in return. She taught me the merits of hard work, but I thought, but though I loved her so, I worked hard for myself. I would not be so foolish, so selfless towards people who would never give back. I learned that from the father who plucked me out of the orphanage for his own selfish gain. I pocket the lighter before I can feel the urge to actually set up anything ablaze. Considering my close proximity to the flowers, they would be most likely the victims of arson. Just the thought of it itself is blasphemous. Nevertheless, that doesn't save them from being picked. Just enough to make a bouquet of things in honor of Eleanor. Would you be proud of me if you saw me now, mother? <laughs> Maybe. You're always so forgiving. No matter what trouble I got into, more than I deserved. Especially now. It's been a while since I've talked to mother like this. I've been thinking of both my dear parents far too much as of late, which, when I shouldn't. I have a future to look forward to and a present to take care of. These memories of the past give me nothing but grief. The life of Lucille Mitchell Chandler should be nothing but a footnote in Luke Wright's non-existent autobiography. It's because of Hannah, isn't it? I worry that she's all too much like my mother and it scares me, and that thought of and the thought that I'm turning into my father is even more so. But even if history is set to repeat itself, I am not a child anymore. Consent, content set aside, unable to do anything but help, to, and too inexperienced to think that the worst wouldn't happen, I have money to buy the best medicines and doctors if need be. She'll get better. She has to. And once we get this little bump on the road, I can stop worrying. All will be right with the world. Unfortunately, my time alone is cut short, though. I... I think those flowers look beautiful, my lord. What? The parlor, the room where the lady stays for her tea. It could certainly use some. The voice is not familiar, though. I'm not really one to remember such things. Oh my god, that's the girl! Yo! Yo, wait, 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 wait! So everyone, everyone is seeing this girl as like the creepy, like messed up one. But Luke only sees her as, like, how she actually looked? Whoa, okay. Going with her attire, I would say that she is one of the housekeepers. Strange, considering I've sent all the staff but Johan's away. Her face, as pretty as it is, is unfamiliar to me. It would be a lie if I said that I didn't set uh, me on edge. Most would say that I care little for my employees. That isn't entirely untrue. However, I like to think I know people who work for me, especially those who would roam my home, even if it's just a face and or a name. Besides, I would remember a beauty as such as her. So, who is this? If she is someone impersonating a household staff to get in, she's doing a bad job of it. Didn't you get the memo? Are you new? Today is a day off. You aren't supposed to be here. I expect poor excuses and apology like the likes of her often give, but she merely smiles. Oh! Oh, no. I've been a servant here since you first came. And I see no signs of lying nor hear it in her words, yet they can't be true. But I find that I feel like I can relax. She has that sort of smile that makes one's kindness sh shine through without words or action. It reaches her eyes, filling them with a strange sort of mirth, as if she's just thought of something very funny. Perhaps had it been any other person, I would have interpreted it as a deceitful grin. But the curl of her lips and the shine in her eyes are too soft to hold any malice. She takes my silence as a sign that she can continue. And it's not like I feel any urgency to stop her. I'm really not in the mood for company, but I'm not adverse to at the moment either. Entertaining a beauty like her, even for a little while, wouldn't hurt. Of course he would say that! And how says she proves easy to listen to, despite how oddly she speaks? I'm sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't have bothered you. Look at me, talking to the master of the house without even asking for permission. What will the others think? I think it's like, 
Okay, um, I don't know if she's like stuck in time or she's actually seeing Luke and be like, oh my god, there's the lady's fiance. It could be like she's stuck in time and she's just like repeating the actions, that what happened to her before she died. So maybe the fiance of Lady Shirley did like flowers and he was in the garden planting a lot. And then she was like, oh my god, there he is, I'm gonna go talk to him. And she's just like reliving it. She can't break the cycle, like you know what I mean? She's stuck in that moment. It's either that or she actually does see Luke, but she thinks it's someone else, like the other guy. If you'll excuse me, I'll just... I haven't driven you away yet, have I? And it's your day off. I don't see why we can't chat a bit. Uh, of course. If that is what you wish. As... as long as it does not get you into trouble with... with the lady. To even take time for someone as lowly as me. No wonder that everyone under the mansion's employ is so fond of you. Though, it should have no longer been a surprise to me. You have always been such a... a kind and... loving lord. I have to stop myself from calling her out on her shite. It's almost as if she's talking about an entirely different man. No matter how big my ego gets, I know for a fact that I'm hardly in the running for Best Boss of the Year award. The only reason that most of my staff say is because of my decent compensation. I'm not cheap. But if she wants to lay it on thick, I'll allow it. <laughs> Who wouldn't want a beautiful woman complimenting them? I'm sure she'll be fine with this. We are just talking after all. Unless you had other things on your mind when you approached me. The words leave my mouth before I even realize what I've said. I panic a bit. Though I can get away with picking up women out of the city, sometimes even out of the country, I've always taken care I always taken care not to do so in my home or in my business. Not when it's easy for Hannah to find out about my infidelity through these channels. So he does sleep around. I mean that's kinda evident when he almost slept with Marianne, right? Though seriously, I still don't know what the big deal is about it is. I just have an in I just have an itch I need to scratch. I I know it must be amusing to see a girl flustered for for a man of your Stature, but please don't say such things my lord. I saw you alone and simply thought you could use some company Thankfully, and I do count my lucky stars It seems the woman takes a joke rather than a casual pass up to be intended to be So how are you liking your work around the mansion? The place is wonderful, but I imagine the upkeep is ungodly with all the rooms and whatnot I don't even want to think about how many people are on the staff roster Work is work my lord. It is a way of living a purpose from day to day. It is certainly far better than doing nothing or having no food to eat. The house itself is also beautiful. There's no lack of things to look at. I'm sure you've seen those books in the study. I... I can't read any of them yet, but... If given the chance, I... I'm sorry. I shouldn't be thinking of those things. Especially when the rains... They might bring more work to us soon. It will definitely be much more... More difficult when it returns. Idling about is the least I should be doing. I guess you can put it that way if you want to be brutally honest about the whole thing. And the rain shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully. Maybe. If a little dreary, at least she doesn't beat around the bush. I like the honesty. Many would bemoan their status uh, as a household staff, as a janitor, or other menial roles and believe themselves to be for greater things. And I would not begrudge the idea that one can always get better. But why should it be so disconnected uh, discontented with what they have either. The rain is something I simply must get accustomed to if I am to live here. I've not spent long in this place after all, but I have been told that it has rained in this nation since a mother's time and their mother's time. There is little we can do about it. I am just glad to have time in the sun, even for a short while. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> really, these sunny days have been welcome, though I can't imagine they'll last for long. Sometimes I just want to pack my things and leave for somewhere like, say, the Bahamas or whatnot. Get some sun and surf. But certainly, you will return for us, won't you? This is your home, after all. Your people, they won't be pleased if the master of the house leaves. Of course, I can't very well leave my businesses hanging here, can I? I just wish I could actually trust people enough to go on vacation without taking work with me. I've also got to get back here if I ever want proper meals. A proper pudding is something you'll never find out there. The woman nods in understanding, and I must say that she makes for a fine listening ear. Though, what she says next it gives me a pause, whether she meant it for me to hear it or not. And good tea. Uh, from, from what the cook has been telling me, I've yet learned how to prepare one. Perhaps once I do, it would endear the lady of the house to me. I never expected her to be so... 
unkind after what she did for me. That's probably... Remember when Rebecca found the newspaper clipping? It said that she freed the slaves. Lady Charlotte freed the slaves because she didn't want to own slaves. And she was one of them. And then afterwards, she didn't like her because she fell in love with her fiancé. And in turn, the fiancé fell in love with her because she, you know, she's a kind lady. She's pretty. And uh, she got jealous. So Lady Charlotte got jealous. So I'm suspecting the lady is already jealous of her. Um... So, yeah, that would be kind of weird to hear that. It's like, Hannah's not mean to anyone. Though it's only if one catches her in a foul mood. I wish I knew how to avoid her anger. I highly doubt she means Hannah. The woman rarely has a mean bone in her body. And when she actually is nasty towards someone else, is usually deserving enough. Much like with that Rochelle woman. Hell, she even tolerates Harvey for me. Even if she did admit that she doesn't like the man. She must mean the head housemaid, right? I have to laugh at that. Not that I have room to speak, I don't deal with her myself anymore, though even Johans has a few choice words about the head hag, oh my god. She has been under the rights employee when she was also a head housemaid for our father. For my father. And if anyone's not going to get along with someone, it'd be a crotchety old woman. I don't even remember her name. But the woman had been this strict upstart bitch who would took one look at me and the master's bastard son and turn up her nose as if she was better by a mere uh, consequence of birth. That and she absolutely loathed my very existence. Perhaps the rumors have been true. She had a miscarriage while uh, bearing another one of the dearest father's children and she saw me as an obstacle in her being granted a better standing in life. Oh, so the father, yeah, got her pregnant, miscarried and she's like, damn, I don't have an heir for him. That's why he picked uh, Luke. I remember that at least. The only reason I haven't um, the only reason I haven't sacked her yet is because of her competence. Also, because of work undering my household makes him her absolutely miserable. Her resin her resignation made impossible by her pride. Nobody really gets along with that woman. I think everyone just tolerates her because of how old she is. I mean not to be rude or awful or anything, but she's at the age where she'll be pushing Daisy soon enough. Is she? Really, my lord? I'm sure the lady is much younger than that. <laughs> I think the thought of tormenting the young and beautiful gives her reason to live. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem that way. Though I feel sorry for her. One's life should not be wasted away on hatred and anger. It is never good for the heart or the head to always carry ill That's thoughts. That's true. But at the least, you are here for us. We are certainly so lucky to have a lord like you. The lady even more so. The gods smile down on her. Though, if I may be honest, she is... She is to be envied. Even when I have my suspicions about... Even when I have my suspicions about her, she's just so easy to talk with that I've forgotten. I don't even know who she is and if she's actually one of the household staff. That would explain why she was so easily gives obvious wrong statements about my character. Though, if she is here for a malicious reason, she would have done more than do so t small talk with me by now, wouldn't she? I have so many questions, perhaps curiosity will kill this cat. It's strange that I've never seen you before. What's your name? You do not remember? I don't believe you've mentioned it, or am I missing something? You still cannot comprehend it, can you, my lord? Her answer chips away at the good mood I'm starting to get into. I have every right reason to be angry at the cryptic response. She threatens insubordination with, the very, with her very presence alone. But instead of hurling vitriol at the woman, I take a deep breath. Didn't want my mood to be ruined further than it already is. Not right now when I can let my temper take its course another time. Whatever your name is and no matter how long you've been working for us, that does not change the fact that you shouldn't be here. I'll call you a cab to bring you to the city if you want. Shouldn't I? What if I do not wish to leave? Why did the music change? It was all nice and sweet and now it's like creepy. I merely desire to stay by your side and serve. Is that such a deplorable thing? Um, um, okay. <laughs> her gaze sends chills down my spine. It's too easy to see the devotion, the obsession in her eyes, not the good sort either, as her scrutiny makes me feel like I'm laid bare. The offness in her presence is the most palpable, with the feeling of bugs crawling on my skin, and the silence that makes it seem as if the world has stopped. Oh god. Any friendly atmosphere we might have gone, uh, we might have going for us is completely forgotten. Danger! A small part of the back of my mind screams. The part that has kept me alive all these years. And in hindsight, I'd be stupid to not take heed of it. 
But I've grown arrogant, complacent, and content to hide behind the wealth and power. Yes, it's a, a deplorable thing, as you said, because I'd like to be alone now. Thank you very much. If you didn't want the day off, you should have reported to your superior. Oh, I don't like this. This is utterly unprofessional of you, and I shall be issuing complaints. In fact, if you know it's good for you, you should start looking for another employer. It's at my threat that the smile on her face turns tight. Oh, I God. See. It escapes you still. This is unfortunate. Bitch, what are you talking about? How despairing that this misery must go on. But maybe if you come with me, I can help you. I can. Ah! You can what? When she reaches out for me, I recoil with a hiss. How dare you lay your filthy hands on me without my permission? I am not going anywhere with you. Now step back and walk away before I have you forcibly removed. Ah! Oh god, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew she was gonna change. Oh, blah, blah. Okay. As if a switch had been flipped, the woman's expression turns horrific. Although that may be a very well be the understatement of the century, she herself turns horrific. Her presence is suffocating, bearing down on me. I'm rooted on the spot through no fault of my own as her my fear paralyzes. You act too much like that vile woman. Poisoned by her rotten influence and her filthy words. Uh. But that can be remedied now that you're here. Oh, how we have waited to welcome you home. Come, my lord. The house beckons. When her fingers grasp at the back of my coat, I, fi I finally find it in me to break it off and run. I can still feel the eyes on me as I run back to the house, but I refuse to acknowledge it, let alone look back. All I need to do is get away from her and to make sure she stays away. If that means acting like a coward and seeking out company to keep me safe, nobody can tell me to do otherwise. Bravery isn't something to be lauded if it comes along with stupidity. Okay, I'm gonna end the episode right there. What the hell was that? That was really weird. Um, so... Again, my theory is the reason why she's acting like this is she's stuck in like a time loop. Like she's replaying her memories of the actual fiance of Lady Charlotte. But at the same time, I guess like her death, whatever happened to her, it kind of turned into this like twisted thing. So she became obsessed with the guy because she was in love with him when she was alive. But now that she's dead, probably murdered for the wrong reasons, right? Um, she was burnt alive. And whatever curse is laid upon her, it made her turn evil, so she's become like this obsessed lady. She's like, I'm gonna stay with you forever now, uh, and not leave him alone. Because I don't think this lady was like that when she was alive. Um, just, ah, just her face, like, oh, and it turned creeped me out, I didn't like that. Anyway, you guys let me know in the comments what you think, and if you guys like this video, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next episode with a letter. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye. Down to clown. <laughs> Get yourself a clown! Hire yourself a clown! You know what I'm saying? Feeling down, get a clown, he'll blow you away! ...to the main characters. These powerful beasts are known as summons. They are extraordinary beings that can be called into battle by their summoner. They are also depicted as